uh, Greenery. Welcome to the couch for the first time. We tried to have Greenery on uh, a couple months ago when JR dropped Broken Easel, but, you know, everything didn't work out. But definitely uh, appreciate his contributions to that project because some of our favorite songs, I know I, I don't want to speak for prayers, but I, I think I do. Uh, <laughs> some of our favorite songs off that project are produced by Greenery, and um, we'll kind of go back into where you started. So, But with that said, man, Green, we want to, you know, let the people know about you a little bit, man, where you from. Uh, what got you into producing, and then we'll kind of just go from there. Got you, got you. Go by Greenery. Uh, my name is Justin Green. I'm originally from Richmond, Virginia, but spent most of my life in North Carolina. Proud graduate of uh, North Carolina Central University. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead with the Eagles, Fly High Eagles. You know what I'm saying? Love my HBCU. Um, just started music when I was like five years old. I uh, started on percussion, started playing drums in church, kind of transitioned from drums to uh, piano. Um, always had a love for music, different types of music, R&B, definitely R&B, hip hop, rap, anything. Um, so I think once I got to college, I would see uh, people messing around with Fruity Loops. And me just being a piano player, it's like, all right, what well, is Fruity Loops in it? Had no idea what I was doing. So it's like, all right, I know this is not for me. Let me stick with just playing piano. But I kind of picked it back up. And once I seen out, I kind of was good at it and I could learn and I was steady learning this. I'm here now and I'm, I'm making music like every day. This is my passion. I, I'm trying to make it like my full time job and a career out of this. So, yeah, man. Oh, oh, man, man, look, it seems like you're well on your way. Seems like you're well on your way <laughs> with uh, some of these projects releasing, but we'll, we'll dive deeper into, you know, what you like in, in the background as we move along. But, hey, Patty, man, yeah. for the people who don't know and are watching for the first time, you know you know the drill, man. Just give, give it to them. No doubt. Patty Honcho out of Patterson, New Jersey. You know, I've been releasing music since I was probably 16, writing since I was nine. Brawl Around 5 just came out February 10th, produced by Greenery. It's on all platforms. Go check it out. Appreciate y'all. For sure. All right, Press. So if you don't mind, man, I'll open up with just Go the obvious. Um, what, what brought you two together, man? I know Cherish the Hunger is when we first heard you guys together, but, um, you know, just give, give us a little bit of what brought you guys together and now for a full-length project with just, you know, one producer, one MC. I want to go, let me go from my perspective first, because I'm the one that hit him. And I heard him um, produce a song for JR. And JR, like, tagged him, shouted him out on one of the songs. I forgot which song it was specifically that I heard him, because they got a lot of work together. So I forgot which one it was first. But I was like, oh, this beat crazy. And then I went on Greenery page, and he only had, like, like probably a thousand or two thousand followers, however it meant it was, and I was like, oh, he, he seemed accessible, <laughs> so I just hit him up and was like, yeah, I'm a f first. I went to his um, Apple Music page, and I listened to the the Cook Up series, and I was like, nah, he he liked that, <laughs> so I hit him up and was, and Dream of Me, which is on Cherish the Hunger, that's on one of his Cook Up um, or or one of his tapes, and. I heard that and I was like, I really want to rap over this. Like, this would be the best intro. So I bought that one just from hearing it one time. And uh, yeah, we we started clicking ever since then. You know what I mean? A cool dude. We we like minded. So it worked that way. Okay, Green. What made you want to work with him, man? Because I know from a producer perspective, give give me the real. I would have. Let's just be transparent. <laughs> not every not everybody does well on your production. You'll take the you'll take the money, right? But not everybody yeah. does well. What made you want to get into Patty, Patty Honcho and really just start to lock in on this project? Um, well, if y'all know Jr., anybody that uh, can rap along with Jr. or anybody that he refers to rap, uh, I'm all for it. Um, Jr. is a a beast on uh, the mic. He's very lyrical, so I, I tapped into Patty when he, we kind of got that connection. And uh, just like Patty said, it was like, all right, I'm checking out your projects, and this is dope. And uh, my little brother, he started checking out his project. And for me, uh, my little brother's like my right-hand man. So if he's like, hey, man, one thing about Patty, he 
he can rap on anything. And that kind of caught my attention. And it's like, all right, let me send him something that's out the loop, something that he's not comfortable with. And it's every time I sent him something, it was fire that he sent me back. Um, even Cherish the Hunger. Like, I appreciate him for just thinking of me to work on that project. And um, every, I feel like everything we put out and everything that we are going to put out is it's just going to top the last joint, man. So I'm very appreciative that I made a friend and a brother in him for real. Okay, okay. That makes sure. Hey, thank you for telling us that. It's more already in the works. So hey, more to come already, huh? <laughs> Indeed, indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I got I got questions for what's to come because you know y'all I'm tapped in and I know y'all have dropped a few nuggets out there on, on what's next and, and all. But um yo, Patty man, um we at we at part five, round five, man. I mean, when is it gonna stop? Is it is it just is it just how much does this series mean to you, man? Just from like the SoundCloud era days all the way up until now. All right, so personally, this series, it means a, a lot to me. It's probably the best series I've had, uh, cultivation of music that I've put together. Um, round the first four rounds, you know, they just YouTube beats that I had to go on YouTube, and I was like, I want to rap off this, that, and the third. I ain't have no money to hit the producers, and this was only just in 2020. And, you know, now I'm tapped in with real, real producers, but Brawler is an acronym. Brutal resentment awaits when losers envy real brawler and uh, life is a full fight. So I'm gonna make this 12 rounds. But at the end of the day, what the way I want to do it now going forward is all they all going to be one producer projects. And I'm gonna just like just switch the producer for each brawler. And then I feel like everyone going to keep getting grittier and grittier and grittier and grittier because each round of your fight if you're going against somebody and me going against basically the, the producer if you're going against somebody that's a formidable opponent opponent is the each round is going to get tougher and tougher so each round that comes going to get more gritty and gritty and this definitely means a lot to me this series i, I love it yeah this was like one of the best listens this weekend i really do think y'all should go check it out and uh as you check this one out go back on this soundcloud check out the brawl around through one through four you'll kind of see the evolution and how how his uh plan is coming together for this five round fight i uh, 12 round fight that he's saying that this is going to be so uh yeah uh right, right off the jump on this one though it grabs you eight songs 21 minutes definitely ain't a waste of your time at all like you're you're gonna enjoy it and especially like i'm gonna tell you I, I have my stuff on repeat minute that intro come back on i no matter how i'm listening to it like i gotta re-listen at that intro it just gets me every time man like uh like like i said you come out swinging on it so i don't want to end when i hear that uh tune come back on so <laughs> how you feel about the trade man you know harden is finally gone all year long i mean you finally get ben simmons in I mean, that's what Daryl Moore you've been trying to do. You know, y'all, y'all, y'all. Let me know how y'all feel about the trade. Who, who won the trade? Right. Uh, if anybody know me, man, I, I go to a lot of Nets games. I already been to like almost ten Nets games this year. I'm a Laker fan, but I live right there, so I like to go to the Nets games. And I went to the Nets and Philly game, and it's crazy because, like, you know, they got a lot of animosity. I went before the trade, so the fact that Harden is over there now, uh. I honestly think Philly Philly could have won it, but we have to see how Harden is. Like we don't Harden is like now he's becoming sort of like a drama queen or something. I don't know what it is, but he he's forcing trades. This is his second time in a row. So if Harden likes the locker room, I'm giving it to Philly because how can you go bad with Harden and, and Joel? I feel like one. It's hard to say, honestly, um, because of Harden's game. I'm not sure if it's going to mesh well with Joel and Embiid, them two players that really got to have the ball in their hands to make something happen. Um, not so much Joel, because I feel like he can make things happen from a center standpoint way more than James should be from a guard standpoint. And as far as Ben Simmons, um, we don't know what he can do as far as this year because we haven't seen anything. I didn't um, even mention him. Yeah, even then, um, 
I don't even need him to shoot. I know people get on him about his his shot, but I, I don't even look for small forward to shoot. I just need you to play defense and make things happen on the court as far as a stretch. Um, so it, it's kind of hard to tell because he, he's on a team to where he can mess well with the Kyrie and the KD, but they have attitude issues as well, just like James Harden and Joel Embiid does. So it's like you got two teams that – both of them got attitude issues. Both of them have superstars that need the ball in their hands. And it's hard to say. And it's not like both of them like that good right now. 